Hey there! In this video, I'm going to be talking about using sets on Shutterstock to help you increase your earnings. But first, I just want to congratulate the winner of a little giveaway that I had a couple of days ago. In one of my other videos, I asked, what inspires you about photography? And the winning comment is this one. This is a comment by Jim Penn, and his words are just beautiful, so definitely pause the video and read this if you want to be inspired. Now, I loved all of the comments that were left, and many of you actually inspired me. So I'm thinking about ways of how I can incorporate your answers into a future video. Thank you to everyone who poured your heart and soul into a comment. Now, back to the video. For those of you who use Shutterstock, you might have been wondering, what good does it do to use sets? After all, organizing your photos into different sets can take time. Obviously, if you wanna share your photos with others, using sets is a great way to do that. But what I personally use sets for is to track my photos and see how they are doing based on the categories they are in. So to manage your sets, log into your contributor account and scroll down a bit. Click on View Catalog Manager. Now that you're in the Catalog Manager, you can create different sets or basically different categories to put your photos in. For example, you could create a set called Food and drop all of your food images into that set or you could create a set called wildlife and again, drop all of your wildlife photos into that set. So after you have created your set, go to all photos and then choose which photos you want to put into which sets. You can also search for specific photos by typing a keyword in. This is all pretty self-explanatory once you're there, so I don't think I need to give a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create a set and how to move a photo into it. Now, after your photos are in a set, click on that set. Next to the title of that set, you will actually see how much money all of the photos in that set have made you so far. This is a fantastic way to really dive into your photos and analyze them and see which categories have earned you the most money. You can ask yourself, hmm, how is my wildlife photography doing? How does it compare to my food photography? Or what about my real estate photos? I didn't actually start using sets until recently, but once I got into them, I just found them invaluable for data analysis. And while you can publish your sets for the public to see, you can also choose to keep them private or just keep some of them private that you're just using for data analysis purposes. One of the sets I made is called Donald Trump because as some of you might know, I took some photos of Donald Trump on two different occasions and I put a few of them up on Shutterstock. Now, this is actually one of my smallest sets with the fewest number of photos in it. However, this very small set has earned me $1,154, the majority of which came from about two or three photos. Meanwhile, my worst performing set is a set that I called Squirrels. I love taking photos of squirrels. However, I realized they don't do well at all on Shutterstock. So I made the set just to see how poorly they performed. And from a set with 51 squirrel photos, I made a grand total of, drum roll please, a dollar and 80 cents. So to say the least, squirrel photography is definitely not going to make me rich. However, Donald Trump might. Just by analyzing and looking at your sets, you can very clearly see that it's not just all about the numbers which will define your success on Shutterstock, although numbers are a good thing, but it's also about the type of photos, the categories that they're in, whether or not they're saturated. That's why one person with 1,000 photos up on Shutterstock might be making $500 a month, whereas another person with 1,000 photos on Shutterstock might be making $2 per month. It's simply because of the type of photos they upload. So people are always asking me, how much am I gonna make if I put up 2000 photos? And the answer is, there is no answer. It completely depends on what kind of photos you put up. So to find out what you should be shooting and what you should be creating more of, what kind of photos will earn you more money, create some sets and categorize your photos and then look and see which categories are earning you the most money. This is where you can find a lot of clues about what's going to work best for you. You can also have some fun with calculations. For example, you can divide the earnings made in a set by the number of photos in the set to get an average value per photo. For example, if hypothetically I made $1,000 from food photos and I have 200 food photos in that set, the average value of each photo is $5. However, this calculation is not always ideal because sometimes 
Most of those earnings in that set will come from one or two photos, not from the entire set. So in that case, this calculation would not be a good representation of the entire set. So I've ranked the sets that I personally created from the most successful sets to the least successful sets. And this is what it looks like for me. Number one, Trump photos, no surprise there. Number two, aerial photography. So that means my drone photography, essentially. Number three, illustrative editorial photos. Number four, news events, such as protests and parades. Number five, Florida photos. And this is not because of my travel photos that I took in Florida. This is actually because one of my top selling images is in the Florida album. And it's actually not a photo of a beach or anything like that. It's a photo of a lantern I took at a ghost tour. This ghost tour was in Florida. So I actually just dropped that photo into my Florida album. And that's kind of like what bumped up the entire set. Next is food and drink, stores and businesses, Bethesda, which is the area that I live in, logos and signs, Washington DC. And by DC, I'm actually just talking about travel photography of Washington DC. I did not put the news events into this category. These are simply just picturesque photos of the city. Then comes beaches, wildlife, animals, insects, blossoms, and squirrels. Of course, I could create many, many more sets out of all my photos. These are just a few categories I created just for fun and to see how they were doing. So just from looking at my personal set ranking, I can see that news photos, drone photos, and illustrative editorial photos did phenomenally well. And I will definitely focus on creating more of those in the future. And the ones that ranked horribly were wildlife, animals, insects, beaches, and nature. Of course, this should not be a guideline for you because this is not a scientific calculation of Shutterstock in general. This is just my own personal calculation. And maybe your insect photos will do a million times better than my poorly performing insect photos. In fact, perhaps insect photos are going to be your number one best-selling category. You never know. But what you can do is compare your photos to your photos and see which categories you should produce more photos for. That, my friends, is the value of sets. Now, if you want to know which photos a buyer might be interested in, then the next video you should check out is this interview I did with a Shutterstock customer. In the interview, he tells me what he wishes that more Shutterstock photographers would upload and which kind of photos he really, really needed, but he just couldn't find them on Shutterstock. It's super valuable info to hear from him, so definitely check that out. As always, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel if you're new here, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.